All right, guys, today we got a little bit of a problem. Um, we own a new apartment building, and we actually have two rooms on the first floor and indicated by the heart and the diamond, and then we have a second floor indicated by the spade and the club. So four different apartments, four different tenants. Ideally, each tenant will have a key to their apartment, and their key will only open their apartment, not none of the others. Well, that's great. That's easy. We all know how to do that, uh, being in the Locksport community. This next part's a little more difficult. Um, there's actually a maintenance guy on the first floor, and he needs to be able to get into either of these two apartments at, at any time. So he needs a key that'll open these two apartments, but not those two. Because on the second floor, I got another maintenance guy, and he can open these two apartments at any time, but not these two. So now things get a little bit more tricky, right? And now to make it even more tricky, you're the owner, right? You wanna be able to get into any apartment at any time to do those safety inspections. So you need a key that will open all four apartments. Well, now we need to talk a little bit about master keying. And let's take a look at how exactly that works. All right, this is what the guts of a typical master key lock would look like. Five pinner, what happens above the shear line over the drivers and springs, they're all identical. So what happens up there, just ignore that for right now. The important part is down here. Now we're all familiar with standard pins and this one's pinned up for a five pin key. And you can see there's a little variation in the pins. Not too challenging, but uh, we're used to that. This is the new stuff right here. Now master wafers, you can have it only on one cylinder or in this case, I put it on all five. Well, how does it work? Well, the key that we're all familiar with will, open, will reach this shear line and open up the lock. What happens if we take this wafer and put them down here? Would the original key then open that same lock? And the answer, of course, is no. There's enough depth on this little wafer, to, uh, enough variation, so that the original key wouldn't open. This would require a different key. And then this would require yet a third key, a fourth key a fifth key, a sixth key. And you can see with five wafers, we have a lot of permutations and combinations there. So we can actually have a lot of different keys with only a five pin lock. Well, in our original example, looking at these guys, we only need a total of actually uh, three different tiers called a hierarchy. So let's take a look at how that might work. All right, guys, this is what our hierarchy would look like. Here we have the heart apartment and the diamond apartment. And on these two keys, we'll open only those apartments. And, and likewise, on the other side, we have a spade and a club, and they will only open those two apartments. The next hierarchy, called the sub-master part of the hierarchy, this one will open both of these apartments. And then on this side, this one will open both of those apartments. And at the very top, your master key will open everything beneath it. So a lot of common ground between the bidding of these, but there's enough in there that we're going to be able to uh, differentiate between these different hierarchical levels. Let's take a look at how we can do that. All right, guys, this is the new Master Key Pinning Kit from Sparrows, and they sell this for the barely affordable price of $9.95 Canadian, which is $7.75 US. Inside of this cool kit, uh, pretty tough opening there, we have all seven keys, and they're all, they've got the little stencils on them to tell you which locks uh, they go to. And we have the actual pins themselves. Uh, inside of here, you'll notice we actually have three key pins, one, three, and five. They're different length key pins. And then in the chamber number four and chamber number six are two different size wafer pins. And this last one just contains a bunch of extra drivers and springs and the stuff that generally shoots out and goes across the lab that you never find again, you got some extra parts inside of there. Also inside of this kit, now you'll notice you're starting to see some familiar symbols here, which is where I stole those from. This tells you the pinning. Now remember, this is these are only the key pins. The driver pin and the spring are located up there somewhere. We don't care because they're the same in every single lock. The only things that will change are the key pins. Now let's just take a look at this just for a minute. The bottom key pins, the ones with the tapered ends, will go on the bottom here, and they would be number from, again, from this box, three, three, and three, and then one and one. And then above those go number six wafers, all the same wafers on every single one. So pretty cool. That's how you get the answer to the, to the uh, spade lock. Now let's take a look at this guy, all four. So right away we know we're using different size wafers, 
but you notice that some of the bottom pins are the same. Three and three, three and three, one and one. So a lot of, a lot of similarities, but just enough so that the spade key will not open the diamond. And then a lot of similarities all the way through. For example, in that first pin, all of the bottom key pins are threes. The only thing to change are the wafers and of course some of the other pins. So by using five different wafers and five different key pins, we have so many possible permutations and combination. We can surely find a way to pin up these seven keys to make our apartment problem work for us. Let's go ahead and take another look at that and we're going to use these uh, these formulas to, to pin up those locks. All right guys, I've got our hierarchy laid out just like we had before. We have our four different apartments and then we have this floor and then the second floor with the uh, with the spade and the club on this side. And then we have our maintenance keys. So this key will open those two, this key will open those two, and then the master key opens basically everything underneath it. Um, I, have, I have these pinned up according to the instructions. I got a little mark, so it should be easy to kind of figure out. I'm not gonna try every single combination here, but let's just start up one side and just make sure everything works. This is the, uh, if I can make it focus here, this is the heart key. So he should open up only the heart lock. Let's find out. So we got a diamond lock. Nothing. He should open him, and he does perfectly. He better not open these guys. Beautiful. And beauteous. All right, let's put him back. Um, let's move up the chain a little bit. Now this is the maintenance guy's lock. He should open both the, the heart and the diamond, but he should not open these two. Let's check it out. It works a little stiff, but it does work. If you push the key all the way in, Bill, it does work. Now you better not work on these two guys. And he doesn't. And on the club, and he doesn't. All right, so we're looking good. Last thing we need to try is the big kahuna. This is the key that opens every single lock in the whole building. At least that's the plan. And he does. He does. works and the last one and he works there as well all right guys it truly works but just follow the instructions that they give you inside of here i can't imagine a, a more economical way to learn a little bit about master keying than for seven dollars and 75 cents really can't go wrong seven keys and you get all the pins necessary to pin up your locks you do not get the sparrow stringing locks for that price but uh these are the standard progressive locks, and I just had them handy. That's what I used to do the demo. Anyway, appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal, guys. Mm -hmm.